so in this video what we will do is we will create a basic player movement for now we just have the third person camera and our player character okay so for adding the third person player movement what we will do is right here in the assets folder we will create a new folder by the name of scripts then in here we will create a new folder by the name of player controller and then inside the player controller we will create a c sharp script by the name of player script you can name this player controller if you want but we already named the folder player controller so then i'm gonna name the script as player script or you can name this just player if you want then click on the player and just simply drag and drop the script right there at the top okay then just simply double click on the script and it will open up in your text editor for example i am using visual studio code so it is opened in visual studio code okay and right here let's remove the start and update function then right here at the top what we will do is we will create a header and we will name this header as player movement okay then right down below we will create a public float by the name of movement speed let's make the movement speed as four okay then after that what we will do is we will create a function by the name of player movement or you can say a method by the name of player movement and in here we will create a float by the name of horizontal and this will be equals to the keyboard input so we will say input dot get axis and we want to get the horizontal axis okay after this we will create another float by the name of vertical and this will be equals to input dot get axis and we will call the vertical axis from the unity input system okay and guys i am sorry for the typing mistake because as i told you i was sick for the past six months okay so my typing speed is a little bit messed up but it will get back in form really soon okay now you guys will be thinking that where this horizontal and vertical is coming from so if we open up unity then click on edit then project settings then if you click on this input manager and then in the axis you will find this horizontal and vertical right here as you can see so as you can see that the vertical is set on to the down arrow key and up arrow key and then the s and w okay and the horizontal is set to the left right arrow key and then the a and w key okay so we are just accessing this horizontal and vertical okay so now once we have the input now after that what we want to do is we want to move the player so for that we will create a variable by the name of let's just say movement input this will be equals to new let's create a vector 3 and now in here for the vector 3 x y z we will pass the horizontal and vertical so for the x we will pass the horizontal input then for the y we will simply pass 0 and then for the c we will pass vertical okay then we want this movement to be smooth so at the end we will say dot normalized then after this we 
want to move the player game object in the direction of the inputs okay for example if the player presses the ws key then we want the player game object to move in the forward and backward direction and then if the player which is playing the game presses the a and d then we want the player game object to move to the left and right okay so in order to do that we will say transform dot position plus equals to movement speed and we will multiply that by the actually we will say movement input okay because first we want to get the input then when we get the input for example if the input is in the forward or backward direction or in the left and right okay then to that input we want to add the movement speed okay so we will multiply that by the movement speed and we want the movement to be time dependent or you can say frame dependent so at the end we will need to multiply that by time dot delta time okay so this is just a simple script we created a float which is a movement speed of the player then right here we get the horizontal and vertical inputs then we simply normalize that inputs and then right here we moved the player game object according to the movement input and speed okay and then we multiply that movement by time dot delta time in order to make it time dependent or you can say frame dependent okay then now at last what we will do is we will create a update method and in here we will be needing to pass the player movement method right there okay so that this player movement is called every second by the update function or method okay now simply save the script and get back to unity and now if we click on player as you can see we have the movement speed right there and guys let me tell you the reason we use this transform dot position because this player script is already attached to the player game object so that's why we just simply get the position of the player by using the transform dot position as you can see right here now let's simply play the game as you can see here is the player now if we press the forward key as you can see the player is moving forward don't worry our player is going inside the stairs because the player don't have any colliders but we will be adding colliders in the upcoming videos but now as you can see the player move forward backward and to the left and right as you can see okay but now if we rotate our camera to the left side and press the forward key or the w key as you can see the player is still moving forward okay we actually don't want that we want the player to move in the direction where the camera is pointing okay just like in most of the third person games okay so we will be adding that functionality in the next video